Hello again, it's Professor Hendricks, and today I'd like to talk to you about FASTA files. FASTA files, or FASTA files, is a file format that's specifically designed for reading in biological sequences, and it is quite possibly the most widely used bioinformatics file format that there is. FASTA actually comes from an alignment program called FASTA, and uh, was basically one of the first alignment programs similar to BLAST, but BLAST ended up probably being the most widely used, but the file format from FASTA stuck around, and it has far surpassed the longevity of that original program, I would say, or at least far surpassed its, its originally intended use for that alignment program. And so the basics of a FASTA file, and so I'll show you a couple of examples, and so if I use less to read this in, I created one called oneseek.fasta, and so in this example, it's one sequence, as the name implies. And so what you see here is that it begins with a greater than sign and a unique identifier that immediately follows that greater sign. There's no space in between the greater than sign and the identifier. And there's a new line, and then the remaining characters, the remaining lines of this file correspond to the sequence that, that the DNA underscore seq1 identifier refers to. All of these characters are part of the same sequence and should be theoretically concatenated into one sequence. That's implied by this FASTA file. Now, if I have multiple sequences, I can show you an example of that. And I just created one called sequences.fasta. And so in this case, there's a separate identifier for each sequence. There is no additional new line between records, although it wouldn't be terrible if there, if there were. And you can see that some of these sequences are represented in one line, others are mul multiple lines. And so big DNA 2 here has three lines and their variable lengths. And so this is probably the most general case, and so all of these sequences are different lengths. And so I want to be able to read in both of these files. And for illustrative purposes, I'll just start by first reading in the oneseq.fasta, and then I'll move to reading in the multi-sequence fast file. So I'm going to use Emacs and create a script to do this. So I'm going to define a script, and I'm going to call it read fasta, for lack of a better name, .py. And tell you what, to make this interesting, I'll also introduce the sys module. And so I'm going to, at the top, I'm going to do import sys. Now sys, short for system, is a way to read in files from the user. And so what I'll illustrate is um, what I call a usage statement. And so usage statements, I might start off with a string and basically say usage. This tells me how to run the script. If I forget, this is an easy way to do this. And so I'm going to concatenate the name of the script itself, which is in sys.argv, because sys.argv is a special list. And it's a special list associated with every script that imports the sys module. And it contains the script itself is the first argument, and all other terms typed in the GNU Linux terminal after the script name when the script is run. I'm basically going to say what I expect. I expect a FASTA file afterwards. And then I would say if len is not equal to what I expect, in this case, the len of sys.rv, which is again a list, as I stated, and since it, this list is going to contain the zeroth element will be the name of the script itself, and the term indexed by one will be the first argument, the FASTA file, I expect two terms in this list. And so I'll put colon, and then I'll print the usage. And you know what? I don't need to capitalize this. I don't know why I'm going through all the trouble to uncapitalize it. But anyway, sys.exit, and... So this is kind of like a simple way to present some sort of like help printout to tell the user of the script how to, how to use the script. And I kind of recommend doing this as a general rule. And so I will define a subroutine called read fasta, def read fasta. And I need to take in a file name. And as we saw last time, we can read a file using a file handle and the open function. So I'll say for simplicity, f equals open file name. 
And I've got some wild mix of camel case strings and underscores, which I don't normally recommend, but I'm just going to, you know what, maybe I'll just make this file underscore name and just kind of be consistent with my naming scheme here and do everything with underscores. And so now that I've opened up my file handle, I'm going to loop through the contents of the file and say for line in F. And I want to first check to see if the line begins with a greater than sign. And so if it does, then that should be our new line. If it doesn't, then that should be the sequences. And so maybe what I'll do is I'll also create variable names. How about def line to store the definition line, the first line with that greater than sign. And the next one will store my sequence. And I'll just call it sequence equals uh, empty string. So I've created two empty strings that will be used to store the contents of this FASTA file. And so remember, my first intention is just to read a script that can just read in a FASTA file that contains one sequence. Normally, you wouldn't want to do that. Normally, you'd want to have a more robust program. But let's just start off with that. And so what I would do is I would say for line in F, and then I might say um, if line... Um, I want to see if it, if it starts with a greater than sign. Well, one thing I can do is I can say line of zero, because remember that's a string, equals equals a greater than sign, colon, and then if it starts with a greater than sign, then it must be the def line. And I'll basically use that strip function, and then I'll put else, colon, and if, it, if it's not the new, if it's not the def line, then it must be the sequence itself. So I'll put sequence. And because that sequence was on multiple lines of that file, I want to append. So I want to do that plus equals thing, which basically says sequence equals sequence plus, whatever the line is, line.strip. And strip again removes the new line. And then ultimately I want to return the def line and the sequence. And this would do it. This would basically solve my 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 uh, task here, and I could put def line sequence equals read FASTA file name. And the only thing that's left for me to do is to define file name, and I could say file name equals sys.argv of one. Save this, and if I run it, and I could give it the FASTA file name, and Basically, it doesn't really do anything because I didn't print anything out. But if I printed this out and said print def line sequence, I basically get out my def line and my sequence. So now to illustrate the purpose of that usage statement that I created, if I say Python and then the script name, so it was read FASTA file, if I were to run this script with no input, it would print this usage statement to the screen and remind me that it's expecting a FASTA file. As soon as I put in the FASTA file, then it works. So it's kind of a really convenient way to remind yourself what the input variables are, the input parameters for the script. Obviously, in this case, it's just a file, so it's not that complex. But if you can imagine, if you have five different files you have to read in, reminding yourself the order with which those files go and all the files that it needs is pretty useful. Now, of course, printing the contents like this is not ideal. It just sort of dumps the contents to the screen, and it's not really adding anything. So it's just uh, as an example, but I want to point out something. that This greater than sign that you see here is not part of the ID of that sequence. It is part of the file format itself. It's an indicator that says this is the beginning of a def line or definition line of the FASTA file. So strictly speaking, we probably want to remove that. So I'll basically show you how to do that. You can do it pretty easily with the replace method. And so that's a string method. So you can just basically say def line equals def line dot replace greater than sign and an empty string. So basically I'm saying take any occurrence of the greater than sign in that string and replace it with an empty string. And I'm storing that output of that replace string into DefLine itself. And so that may seem weird, but um, the replace method does not operate on DefLine in place. 
in the way that, say, for example, list.sort would, but rather replace returns the modified string. And so, in order to get the actual string updated, I would have to store it to be the value of defline. And so now, if I did this exact same thing and printed this out, saved my script, and reran it, I would get the DNA seek, and then I put a space, and then the string itself. And you can see that the string has been concatenated into one big line, which is one of the things that we set out to do. And of course, printing it to the screen is not really what you'd want to do in normal contexts, but I'm just doing that to show you that I did indeed read the file, um, just, just to illustrate that I read the file. Okay, so that's all well and good, but what I would like to do is augment this script to store a multi-sequence FASTA file or the contents of a multi-sequence FASTA file like this one and keep track of each ID. And the way I'm going to do that is with a dictionary. Dictionary seems like the natural way to do this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and remove this stuff here. And instead of sequence as a string, I'm going to define sequence as a dictionary. And I'm going to call it sequences, plural, to remind myself that there's more than one sequence or could be more than one sequence. And this seems like a natural way, to me at least, to store a collection of sequences because you can use the def line or the ID as the key and the value to be the sequence itself. And so what I'd want to do is I want to leave this first part as is. So each time I encounter a new greater than sign, I know I've reached the beginning of a file and the previous string has been completed. And here, if I'm reading my sequence, instead of appending the line to a single variable sequence, I now have a dictionary called sequences, and I want to specify the def line. And so if you recall, I already removed the greater than sign, so this is just the basic ID here, and I'm appending to the value of this dictionary. Now the problem with doing this straight off the bat is it's going to give an error. And the reason is because I haven't told Python what data type the value of this dictionary is. As far as Python knows, it's just a dictionary and could be anything, it could be ints, floats, complex numbers, whatever. So I have to kind of tell it, hey, this is a string and I want to append to this string. So to illustrate that, I'm just going to go ahead and run this. And I know it's going to give an error. It gives an error because it gives you something called a key error. Now, I would, I would argue that there's probably two most common errors in Python. The first most common error is a data type error where, it's, where a data type is used incorrectly. Like you think it's a string or you think it's an int and in fact it's a string and you try to add to it and you have an encounter an error that way. The second most common error in Python is probably a key error, at least in my opinion, in my experience. Maybe that's just the kind of mistakes I make. But it's basically trying to access a dictionary without the value being defined or without the key being defined. So in other words, we can't concatenate the line of this file to the value of a dictionary until we've made sure that we've defined that as, an, as a valid key of the dictionary and a valid value and told it that it's a string. So the way we can do that, simple way to do that is with an if statement. And so basically I could say if defline not in sequences. Now think about that. This is an if statement that basically says if defline is not in the sequences, but recall we talked about before that the in uh, operator, when used in the context of dictionaries, checks to see if the key is in that dictionary. And similarly, in the case of dictionaries, if you put a dictionary in a for loop and loop through the, the dictionary, you'd basically be looping through the keys of that dictionary. So I'm checking if that def line, if that key is not a key to the dictionary. And so what I want to do is if it is not a key, then I want to make it a key. And I want to say sequences of def line. And what value do I want to make it? I'm just going to make it the empty string. So in other words, anytime it encounters a def line that's not already, not already defined as a key to my dictionary, it's going to make it a key of the dictionary and make its value to be the empty string. So therefore, in subsequent attempts where I attempt to concatenate to that dictionary, it's going to make sense. Python's going to know exactly what to do. It's going to recognize that the value of this dictionary is a string. It's initially an empty string but a string nonetheless, and it's going to concatenate the new lines to that string. And I'm going to save this and print this, but wait a minute. I also know that I need to update 
this other stuff. So, so basically, I'm going to go back and um, instead of returning the def line, I'm going to return sequences. Don't need these parentheses anymore. So I'm just going to return the sequences, and I'll change this to sequences. And to illustrate that I've properly read in the file, I'm going to just loop through and print it out. So I'll just say for uh, defline in sequences, colon, print, and I'll just print out defline, comma, sequences of defline. And basically, this is the value that corresponds to this particular defline, this particular key. So it's basically going to print out a key value pair. And so I'll close this so that we can see what it does. And there you have it. So what we see here is, is there's basically four lines here that have been printed out. So I have the, 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 the uh, ID first and the sequence after. And you can see that the, the longer sequence is still there and all the characters have been concatenated together. And so I think this pretty much solves the task at hand. It reads in a FASTA file and stores it to a dictionary. And I will certainly say that there are modules that you can use to do this. There's BioPython, Seek.io can do this. But I think this also is a useful exercise and illustrating what to do in Python in this situation. So with that, I'll close this video and I'll see you next time.